Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode and in today's very special video I will be showcasing a unique pair from Paolo Scafora, a pair of chaka boots with Tyrolese construction. Coming up! Hello everyone, how's it going? As you can see, everything is pretty much different and that's because this is the first video I shoot since I moved to Italy a couple of weeks ago. So, excuse the lighting, the sound, I'm still working on everything and I will take your you know, advice, comments and recommendation. But I thought, why not kickstart this new series, this new adventure with a very you know, special pair of shoes as well. So, you've seen Paolo Scafora, you know who they are, uh, well, who he is, and actually I live quite close and I'm going to visit him soon, but you haven't seen something like this before on the channel and possibly somewhere else. Because this particular pair is not just any chaka boot, it's uh, one that has Tyrolese construction, it has a different type of city sole, and as well, one of the finest leathers that you can find, which is Russian calf. Uh, from Horwin in Chicago and it's a very fantastic replica of the Russian reindeer leather. So that's pretty much what this is about. This particular model is uh, a single made to order that I made for my good friend Mike, who I thank very much because he allowed me to keep these boots for a while, take some photos and you know make this video before I send it to, to him and uh, that, that's really kind because you can uh, see you know the anticipation you might have when you when you get such a pair of shoes and of course in uh, the details that we will talk about uh, like about the sizing this new last what makes it unique what's the difference uh, how can you get such a such a pair of shoes and of course uh, you know pricing and uh, i will be making a group made order a very limited run of this particular model as well so that's what we're going to do in the close-up and then we will have a really nice uh, discussion at the end. So let's get going. All right, let's begin with a new close-up. I hope you like what I've done with the space. So far I'm still working on, you know, details and uh, color and lighting, but I think it looks very good and lets you focus on the shoes or whatever object I'm showing you. Let me know what you think. Uh, I will not show you the actual box of Paolo Scafora because there's no point, we've done this many times. It's a high quality experience with great shoe bags, extra shoelaces and of course your shoes. So we're going to talk about them directly now. Uh, this particular model uh, is pretty much a plain toe chaka boot with three eyelets. So nothing special in that department. It's a classic chaka boot, you know, with those side panels and a back seam at the back. There are a few details, of course, that make it stand out. One of them is the leather, the other one is the construction, and the third one you could say is the very interesting soul, city soul that Paolo Scafora uses with Vibram. Uh, when it comes to the actual design, uh, the moment I took this out of the box uh, and I showed it to a few people, they were like, oh my god, this is one of the nicest, best looking chaka boots I've ever seen. And I think the last really contributes to that. Um, I think they've done a phenomenal job. Uh, I think it was a great idea to to make this particular pair. Uh, you can see it from all angles. Just look how beautiful it looks. It sort of has a mix of an Italian and those Asian, Japanese, uh, you know, very aggressive designs. I really, really like them and I hope you do too. Uh, I will save the leather for last because uh, it's a bit of a longer story. So first of all, let's uh, quickly look at the, the construction. Uh, you've seen Norwegian or Norwegian construction before. Uh, I've had some trouble figuring out what exactly Tyrolese is. Uh, some people refer to it as uh, pretty much the same as Goiser. It's a triple braided Norwegian version if you want to think about it in a very uh, simplistic way. Uh, I've asked uh, Scafora for some explanation and hopefully I will add it in the written review. Uh, but as you can see, this is a triple braided welt. Uh, it's uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, one of the things that I like about Scafora is how he can take such a design and construction that generally looks or makes the shoe look very bulky to make it so discreet 
uh, in a way and I do love if you can see how he adds a sort of like a tint to the thread that matches the color of the uppers so it blends in much nicer than you know if it was just white I think that's a really really nice touch other than that uh, we have the last so this is the first time that I handle the ATR last there's gonna be more info later this is a very sharp uh, sort of like chiseled almond toe this is not round this is not soft square it's quite aggressive yes you can see almond and here's the bottom view really really nice uh, it's a very sharp design it uh, elongates the proportions here it works really well with the side panels and the fact that this is a plain toe uh, without looking disjointed with a cap toe or something detail or other details such as broguing right and uh, what else uh, you have a nicer thicker rubber sole uh, i specifically discussed this with uh, mike who allowed me to film this video and this is of course the best this is vibram this is rubber this is sturdy this is phenomenal and this is sort of like a mix of a city sole of a new city sole but it has as you can see some texture right and uh, this type of grid, Scafora sort of calls it like uh, like Diamante because it resembles like some rhomboid diamonds. Or you could think of it as waffles, right? So, small waffles. Tasty, just like the shoes. And that's about it when it comes for the actual shoe. Of course, they're uh, mostly handmade. More details later. Uh, all Scafora ready to wear shoes are hand welted and hand lasted with machine stitched soles because it sort of makes no sense. Uh, but for a short shot, of course, you can request it to be hand-stitched. And then we have the last part that is really interesting, which is the leather. First of all, here's the last nice, very close-up to the welt. Well, to the Tyrolese stitching. Absolutely gorgeous. And let's talk about the leather. As you can see, the leather has some texture. Uh, it's uh, not scotch grain. Uh, it's called pretty much... There are many ways to call it. Uh, some people call this Utah, some other calls it Hatch Grain, some other call this Russian Kalf, uh, others call it Russian Reindeer Replica. Uh, the last two are the ones that I would use. Uh, Hatch Grain is also an embossed pattern, so it's not natural. And uh, this particular one comes from Horwin, of course, the famous Chicago tannery, one of the best tanneries for leather in the world. And hatch grain or Russian uh, Russian calf has this distinctive, very tight grid pattern grain to look, like look to it. Uh, it's like a cross check, a cross grain. So that's why they call it like this. Uh, and it gets its name from being a replica to the original Russian reindeer leather, which was a leather made hundreds and hundreds of years ago, even around the medieval times, uh, because. It had a reputation for being, uh, you know, tolerant to insects, to, uh, to weather, it was great for the military. For some reason, around the Russian Revolution, this uh, leather stopped being made, uh, we lost pretty much all data, until about 1973 or something, when some local divers found a shipwreck, the Mate Katerina, uh, around, uh, where was it, uh, Plymouth, I think, in the UK, and that ship had sunk in 1786. It was like almost two years, 200 years later, they found the shipwreck. And that ship was carrying a lot of trade goods, including that Russian leather, because it sailed from St. Petersburg, hence the name. And incredibly, they found some of that leather still intact and in good shape. Uh, it's one of the most expensive leathers and premium leathers that you can buy in certain shoes right now. It's still usable. A very limited and uh, a finite resource. Uh, luckily, with some manuscripts, with some uh, archivists and some uh, Russian translators, we were able to uh, create a replica of uh, this leather. And if I'm honest, I prefer this one for the looks because it looks way more polished, while the other one has more of a nostalgic value. And that's about the leather, the construction, the looks. Overall, this is a beautiful chakaboot. Uh, I really like what they did and uh, I suppose the only last part that I could show you are the shoe trees. Here are the shoe trees, uh, nothing you haven't seen before, I I've shown it in other videos as well. Uh, what actually surprised me is, me is that these are really really lightweight, 
Of course, they're hollow. They're not as hollow as some others that I've seen, but these are really, really lightweight. You can probably lift them with a couple of fingers. Uh, technically, these are boot trees because they are, you know, they have a higher grip here and uh, they will show up up there. And they also reinforce the back a bit. Of course, everything like the logo is uh, lasered on top. Uh, it has a really nice texture. It smells really nice. And it's a no brainer. If you buy these shoes for this price, please get shoe trees. Of course, lasted absolutely perfect. And that pretty much concludes our close up. So let's talk more about the shoes. And that was it. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, this is a really, really unique piece. I think this is one of the best looking ready to wear or made to order chakra boots that I have seen lately. You can see it in two ways. Uh, of course, obviously this, it, it looks a little bulkier because of the, of the welt and everything, uh, the triple braid, but uh, you know, it's not for everyone. Some people strictly prefer a nice round toe and they would not be interested in something almondy like this or they would just want a clean line here or maybe they're you know leather sole fanatics but you can still appreciate this for what it is which is a exceptionally good looking pair of shoes with amazing construction and all the details it's just fascinating and it feels so good to to look at it to hold it and to smell it actually and now we're gonna talk details. First of all, uh, let's quickly touch upon sizing. Uh, I did mention that this is the ATR uh, last, which is the first time that I work with this or like physically hold it from Paolo Scafora. Uh, if you've seen my other videos or I will just give you a refresher. Uh, Paolo Scafora has a lot of different lasts. Most of them tend to be quite almondy or, you know, quite aggressive uh, soft square or medium square toes. Uh, for example, the Q last, which is a very popular one. Then you have other ones like uh, the R, the Door, the Vola, and you do have also the, the Serio. And if you want, there are a few options for a more roundless lap, just as the BUK, I call it Book. In any case, for most of them, uh, with the exception of the Q and the Serio, they run half a size larger. So if you are a UK 8, in exa for example, in St. Crispin's Classic, which is a good reference to begin with, then you would size down half for most of the Paolo Scafora lasts. I take a 7.5, for example. And I don't have more data on this particular one, the ATR, yet, until uh, my friend Mike receives the shoes and actually wears them. Uh, but, you know, based on the data from before and discussing this with uh, Paolo Scafora, he told me that the person should size down half because they are actually quite roomy. Uh, so if I were to get one for these for myself, I would also get a UK 7.5. And, and to make it easier for my US folks um, and viewers, if you are a US 9D on, let's say, Allen Edmonds, you would take, again, a UK 7.5. So an additional half size down. And that's about sizing. As far as uh, the shape, I really like how it looks. It's a bit more, uh, you know, aggressive. And I think the overall proportions and this particular last works very well with more elongated shapes that have, you know, no cap toe or they're more like a plain toe uh, because it gives this, this sharp, you know, look to it. Uh, but if there was a cap toe, it kind of looks disjointed uh, sometimes. And I think this is perfect for Chaka boots, plain toe derbies, or like two, three eyelet derbies, Chelsea boots, and Yodpours. I think it will look very nice and fashionable. And that's about sizing. Um, we've already talked about construction. Uh, these shoes are hand welted, pretty much uh, what the Reddit wear. Scafora makes hand welted, hand lasted. Uh, the, stole, the soles are machine stitched. Uh, there is a sword shards if you want them to be, you know, uh, by hand, of course. And the bespoke department is also fully by hand. And that's about it. Uh, as far as availability goes, uh, I maybe or maybe not mentioned that uh, because this was a single MTO, it will run about 2,500 US dollars to make, including the lasted boot trees, including shipping, including pretty much everything. And there is a surcharge for the leather as well. 
Uh, I will be making a very limited run of this particular model for about four to six people. So if you're interested at the time of the video, just send me an email or leave a comment, uh, preferably an email. And uh, you would expect the price to be around 2000 US dollars, including all the stuff I mentioned, like the boot trees, the shipping, uh, whatever taxes, uh, etc. So reach out uh, if, uh, if you're interested, but only serious requests. And the last part is uh, that I would like to talk about is who and why would invest in something like this. Uh, obviously, this particular model and this particular makeup, uh, it's, it's not so difficult to wear, first of all, if you think of it in that way. This is burgundy, uh, Bordeaux, Scafora calls it, and it's a very versatile color. You can wear it with lighter colors, you can wear it with gray, you can wear it with uh, blue. It's very easy to match, so it's very versatile and flexible. Uh, then again, these are chaka boots, so you already know that you're not going to, to wear them with you know, your best business suit, unless you're like the CEO and you will not care what people say. And it's like if you want to dress up a pair of jeans, uh, chinos, uh, or some very, you know, casual suit separates, for example, what I'm wearing right now, I would totally wear this. And because of the texture as well. So it's not fully grain leather, so but also not calf, so it's somewhere in between. And then again, it does take some confidence to wear this because of the construction and that it can, you know, give a lot of attention into your into your feet, which is totally fine. I mean, this is a statement piece. It does take a little bit of confidence to wear. Uh, obviously, if it's not within budget, don't think about it. Uh, if also you don't have your main collection and your core wardrobe, you know, fixed, uh, unless you have tons of money, I would stay away from something like this and start with something more conservative or flexible or easy, uh, depending on your lifestyle. So after you get up between five to 10 great pairs of shoes uh, for everyday wear, then I would say go towards more flashy, interesting, bolder species such as this suit or these boots. Uh, don't be afraid to wear them though. And uh, I wear my monk straps, uh, my double monk boots that also have a Norwegian construction very frequently in my everyday life and I love them. And I'm sure you would love these too. And that's about it. This concludes uh, my hopefully a nice presentation and showcase of something really unique. I'm really hoping that I can get some more answers about the Tyrolese construction and understanding what's the difference uh, because at this point, you know, it's more like flashing points uh, because you already have the Norwegian braided construction and this just adds to the price tag. But then again, it's triple braided. It takes so much more time to make. Uh, it's it's very rare and uh, it's just something else to hold. Uh, that concludes uh, the first video from Italy. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I changed the setup, I changed the angles, I hope the lighting is good, I hope the sound is good, I hope the products are good and I hope I look happy because I'm very happy during my first month in Italy. If you can buy in Florence, hit me up and we'll have a nice cappuccino and discuss shoes. Uh, of course, if you're new to the channel or if you are a viewer and you haven't yet, Please leave a like, subscribe, a thumbs up, and a comment with your thoughts about uh, these boots uh, and everything else or what you would like to see from the channel because there's much more content coming up as always. But before we go, you know what's coming. We do have a bad dad joke of the week. So since we are now in Italy, let's begin with an actual Italian dad joke. So, did you hear about that Italian chef? He passed away. <laughs> what a great start. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.